BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. It's two for the price of one this week. Rather apt, really, considering our subjects are retailers. A lot of hard work behind the achievement, but we've got a lot of good people around us who has made this happen for us. Zubair and Mosin Issa are billionaire brothers from Blackburn who've built a huge retail empire from scratch based around petrol stations. 6,000 of them all around the world. Last year they bought the British supermarket giant Asda. This week they've added the fast food chain Leon. Cafe Nero rumoured to be in their sights too. They have come from nothing. This is a big business with 40-odd thousand employees. They're a very rare species because if this was a public company, it would be in the FTSE 100. The bad news? They don't do media. Every article I read said very private, publicity shy. And sure enough, it was very hard to get anyone to talk to us. Until, bless her, our producer Sally managed to charm the wife of one of the brothers into doing an interview. I am Asma Issa. Born and bred in Blackburn, married to Zubair Issa for 23 years, mother of four children to him. That's more like it. Someone who can give us the inside track, the real story of the billionaire brothers. They actually hate being dubbed the billionaire brothers. They try and avoid the media as much as possible. No disrespect to you guys. None taken. Your chance to set things straight then, Asma. Yes. (laughs) Yes. They may be wealthy now, the 43rd richest people in the UK, according to the Sunday Times, but Zuber and Mosin Issa come from a modest background, raised in a two-up, two-down terraced house in Blackburn. The younger of three boys, born to parents Villa and Zubeda, who came to Britain from India in the late 1960s to work in the textile industry. Off you go, Asma. My father-in-law initially was in the rag trade. Then he went on to the building trade for a few years and eventually ended up buying a petrol station, running the petrol station, I think, when the boys were a bit older. And hence the boys used to help out during their teen years and where the passion for petrol stations came in. They weren't the most academically gifted of boys. Both struggled at school, apparently. Mosin left at 16, having failed to impress his teachers, as friend and now business colleague Ilyas Munshi discovered when he went to give a talk at the school recently. Ilyas summoned to see the headmistress. With a chuckle, she goes to me, well, his attendance was very poor, and I looked at some of his reports, and uh, academically, he needed to do a lot better. So I mentioned this to Mosh, and he goes... Yeah, I remember those days. The teacher would always say, Moshin, I don't know what's going to become of you. Teachers, eh? Zuba left his local state school at 12, went to a faith school instead. In terms of grades, I don't think he did really well. I don't think he'd be happy for me to say that. <laughs> After leaving school, the brothers worked in the rag trade for a bit. Mosin set up a plastic bag firm. Zuba bought a news kiosk. Euro News, that's what he was known as then. Zubel always wanted to do his own thing. He was really interested in retail. So I think when he was about 17, 18, opportunity came up for him to buy a newsagent in Preston, which he ran that from the age of 18. In 1998, Zubel and Asma got wed, had an arranged marriage. They'd actually both been to the same primary school but had never met. We got introduced through our parents. Not exactly love at first sight, but he did um, dazzle me literally at that first meeting. I couldn't sleep that night. He had that sparkle in his eye. Asma wasn't laughing, though, when her new husband bought a derelict petrol station site in nearby Bury. I don't know what he saw in the petrol industry. We'd only been married a couple of years. We were actually on our way back from a holiday in Malaysia and he stopped off in Bury to see this site and then in the car he told me that, oh, I've just bought this. My wife would flatten me if I tried anything like that. Probably why I'm not a billionaire. Needless to say, the business took off. The light bulb moment was when they did a knockdown rebuild of this site. Ilyas Munshi again. What they realised is, if you had a convenience store which offered a broader range of products for people to access, they were more likely to come and shop at your location and fill up as well. Before long, the business was expanding, the couple buying garage forecourts all over England. Every Saturday, 
as Uber would visit all the sites. We'd actually have day trips, which was quite fun, actually. Well, those cars never seem to stop coming. Work and work. Keep those bags and machines humming. Work and work. A few years down the line, when it got to a stage where Zubek couldn't really handle everything himself, um, that's when he approached his brothers and said, one of you, come and give me a hand. And then that's when Mossin came in. Come on and give us a play. By the time Car Wash and Petrol Retailers Association chairman Brian Madison met the brothers in 2007, they were well into double figures. At that time, they probably had 20 or 30 sites. Madison, impressed by their vision. Zuber saw a real opportunity and they developed an absolute winning formula, which was to take the old style shop, which was largely confectionery, tobacco, news that you had on forecourts, and provide a proper convenience store. They did franchise deals and developed partnerships with all sorts of firms, Subway, Starbucks, Greggs, KFC, among others, adding food and drive through restaurant outlets to their forecourts. In 2011, they won Petrol Retailer of the Year. Two years later, the pair taking top honours at the Asian Business Awards. Are they different characters, these very, two brothers? Very different. Zubair is someone who's very easily approachable, I would say. He's kinder. <laughs> Mossin is very work oriented. Zuber, he's a visionary. He likes to build things. Mossin, on the other hand, is more into the kind of operational management, the detail. How do we make it successful? Ilias Munchi got involved with the brothers in 2012, became the group's commercial director. Up till 2012, the largest package acquisition they'd done was about 12 sites in the Midlands. Come around 2012, you get Esso knocking on the door and say to you, we're looking for operators who could take on up to 50 site packages. The ESA brothers got lucky, according to Brian Madison. Just as they were expanding, the big oil companies were heading the other way, keen to offload their forecourt sites. The oil companies were conducting an orderly retreat from retail. It had never really been the oil company forte to develop shop. So now you're, you're scaling up the confidence ESO had over the next three years to sell over 200 sites to us. It was around this time that the FT's Kay Wiggins, writing for Bloomberg back then, first noticed the brothers. People in the market just kept saying, hang on, who are these guys? You know, we hadn't heard of them and suddenly they're everywhere. And they were rolling up all these petrol stations. This is unusual. And little could we possibly have known at that point how big the story would become. In 2016, keen to break into the international market, the Issa brothers made a bold move. They merged their business with private equity firm TDR Capital and changed their name to the EG Group. Few thought Zuba's wife Asma, hopeful her husband might just begin to ease off a bit now. The merger with TDR, that was a big thing. That sort of like gave me hope in a way that, oh yeah, eventually Zuba might just be mine. <laughs> Fat chance, says Kay Wiggins. What changed everything for the brothers was when this private equity firm called TDR Capital got involved. They're basically a sort of a big financial backer with deep pockets that also expects like, big returns on their money. And since then, they've been on this absolutely sort of breakneck pace of acquisitions. With it came wealth. They bought a £25 million townhouse in a trendy part of London, where they're adding an underground car park, cinema and swimming pool. Despite their London acquisition, the brothers remained loyal to their hometown. They've just opened a swanky new headquarters in Blackburn, are planning to build a mosque there, as well as five luxury mansions next door to each other for their families to live in. They've set up a charitable foundation too. Most people are quite proud of the fact that these guys are from Blackburn. Shwab Khan is a reporter on the local paper, the Lancashire Telegraph. And they are investing in Blackburn and there's employment coming back into Blackburn. There's an attention on Blackburn for positive things because towns like Blackburn tended to be painted with the same brush, specifically when it came to ethnic minorities. But this has kind of flipped everything on its head. 
faith is important too. One of the unusual features of their shops is that they don't sell alcohol and have never sold alcohol. And alcohol, certainly amongst all the rest of my members, is a key component of the shop offer. And in most cases, the takings are around £5,000 per week on average. So that's a quarter of a million per shop per year. And if Zuba has now got 400 of these sites across the UK, that's an awful lot of money they are not earning by keeping to the Muslim principles of not selling alcohol. I don't think nothing will ever surpass faith from the moment they wake up till night time. You know, they never miss a prayer. Like we have five prayers a day. Islam is always at the forefront. That's where the charity work all started as well. In Islam, we do believe that, you know, the more charity you give, the more God gives back. I'm not sure it was divine intervention, but towards the end of last year, the brothers became big news with an acquisition that stunned the industry. So Mohsen and Zuba, firstly, congratulations on what's a big moment in your professional careers. And for those that might not know, can you uh, remind us what's being announced today? We are very pleased to announce that together with our partners TDR Capital, we are acquiring a majority stake in the iconic British supermarket chain, Asda. The deal they pulled off, still to be approved by financial regulators, was huge and cleverly put together. And that's what worries some financial experts. The Easter Brothers' empire dependent, they say, on a mixture of debt and structured finance products. At the heart of it, they borrow money, so the company themselves is sort of saddled with with debt um, as a consequence of that. So they just keep going back to the debt markets to borrow more money uh, and they use it to buy these petrol stations and they, they roll them up into a bigger and bigger company. But within weeks of buying Asda came bad news. The group's auditors, Deloitte, suddenly quitting, apparently worried about governance. This was a bombshell for the brothers. You know, although EG Group is a huge company, its revenues are kind of close to those of AstraZeneca, for example. But it turns out that it had absolutely no outside independent board members overseeing things. Lord Stuart Rose, former Ocado chairman and ex-Marks and Spencer's boss, was rapidly brought on board as chairman. I'm a man of a certain age. I've been around a bit. I've got bruises, but I always judge people on what I see and how I feel about them, and particularly on gut feel. This is a proper business. Yes, we need to put some governance in place. I am part of that. But there's fundamentals of the business are sound. These are two what I call proper people truly entrepreneurs and they've seen an opportunity to drive a business from nothing to the size that it is today in 20 years. That's quite remarkable. So what next? Some fear the brothers may have overstretched themselves a bit, are juggling perhaps too much debt. Not true, says EG Group commercial director Ilias Munchi. If the right opportunities present themselves, I think we can grow further. One thing we really know about these brothers is that they like to do deals. <laughs> The FT's Kay Wiggins thinks it's likely there'll be further acquisitions. They are always doing deals. They like to buy companies. Asma may have to hang on a few years yet before she gets to enjoy more time with her husband. I keep telling him every acquisition, I'm like, Zubair, stop now. When are you going to stop? It'll happen. Our life is beyond something we have never dreamed, never imagined. It's like the Big Bang, really. How it happened is still unbelievable. 